Hey, SaaS developers and founders, do you want to supercharge your SaaS application with web and product analytics, feature flagging, A-B testing, and more? Then stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to tell you all about PostHog, which is a tool that has a generous free plan to do all of that. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Jose and here at Teclado I talk about Python and web development. In this video, we're talking about PostHog, a relatively new tool, at least new to me, that covers feature flagging, A-B testing and web and product analytics. What are web and product analytics? Web analytics is uh, something that is quite popular using tools like Google Analytics or Plausible or even Fathom. Product analytics are custom events, such as when a user signs up or they purchase something. Together, these two give you a lot of insight into what your users are doing and especially what things are leading to conversions. So they are essential. PostHog also offers other things such as session replays for when you want to see what your users were doing on your page while they are on the page. This is very useful, especially when they encounter an error and you want to figure out what went wrong. Um, and also sometimes it's just nice to uh, look at a few session replays uh, and you tend to find bugs in your application and, and weird things going on. So it's a very useful tool. But by far what I've used PostHog for the most is for feature flagging and A-B testing. These two things go hand in hand. A-B testing lets you compare two versions of a page and see which one converts better or which one fulfills whatever goal that you've got for that page better. And feature flagging lets you turn on or off certain features. PostHog also lets you use feature flags to do incremental rollouts. That means that you can release a feature only to 5 or 10% of your user base, see if it works, and then increase that percentage over time. That means that if you do have some critical error or something that prevents the users from using your app, you will only affect 5 or 10% of your users at first. To get started with PostHog, all you need to do is create an account. If you're in the EU, you'll have to go to the EU-specific version of PostHog due to data regulations and things like that. Uh, and then get familiarized with a dashboard. What we're going to do is two things in our Python apps. We're going to include the PostHog client in the web. This goes on your template. And we also need to use the PostHog library in the Python code. The client side library will be used for web analytics, such as when a user visits a page and when they leave the page, how long they spend on a page, etc. In the Python client, we can send custom events, such as when a user authenticates or when they purchase something or when they access a specific part of the page that you're particularly interested in, etc. Including the client side code is very easy. In Flask or Django, you just go to your base HTML file and include it there. And using the Python PostHog library is equally straightforward. You do pip install posthog and then you set the API key and you can do posthog.capture passing in the event name that you want to capture. They all show up in the posthog dashboard later. Something that every event needs when you track it with posthog is a user ID so that the event can be associated with a specific user. But a frequent problem in SaaS apps is that a lot of our users are anonymous until they sign up and subscribe to a plan. So something that I do very often is keep track of the anonymous users by creating a session identifier, basically just a UUID that I store in the cookies in their browser and that I receive in every request. And I use that to track all the server side events from the posthog library and then when they do authenticate, I alias that to the database stored user ID so that in PostHog I can see both the anonymous and the authenticated events together under the same user. When using Flask, I use app.beforeRequest to run this code on every request. And if you were using Django, you'd write a middleware to do this. Um, the code looks identical, just make sure to import it in your settings.py under middleware and make sure that the middleware goes under any other required middleware such as common middleware, session middleware and so forth. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more content on web development, Python and SaaS applications. And if you want to dive deeper into web development with Python and Flask specifically, we've got a course designed just for that, which I'm going to leave linked in the description down below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.